Hey everybody, welcome to this week's stream on Saturday. We're gonna be turning up a golf ball today. I'm super excited. I've never tried turning one of those things. So let me switch views so you can see what's on the lathe. I'm super excited, can you tell? I can't wait. So we cast a golf ball with a tee last week. Now I wanna say that this is gonna be kind of more of a kind of experiment and just see what happens, but um, I think it'll be kind of fun. I I'm curious to see what turning into this is gonna be like. Um, and we're gonna do something a little bit kind of, uh, it, it was tough to figure out, Let, let's start over. It was tough to figure out what to make out of this thing because you know, a lot of things you're gonna kind of turn a lot of it away. Um, but I thought, how about we go for, and there's a couple things that went into this decision, but how about we go for a whiskey stopper, a whiskey bottle stopper. So they're like bottle stoppers, but they're a little bit, uh, the, the actual you know hardware is a little bit bigger um, and you can kind of make a bigger handle because it's going on a big bottle. And I thought golf and whiskey, that kind of goes together. And you know, using the, the golf ball, I'm gonna cut into the golf ball a little bit. I, I actually just wanna see what <laughs> turning one of those things is kind of like. Um, but we're gonna turn into that and I was thinking we can just kind of taper it down and keep the T somewhat intact, hopefully all intact. So that's what we're gonna turn up today. Uh, one problem is I didn't have time to um, get, I, I've been working on the bowl, the raffle ticket bowl and the mystery box thing and I just couldn't get on the lathe and, and get, I couldn't get other stuff going um, on Friday yesterday. Um, so what we're gonna do is just drill and tap threads. So you're gonna be able to see this in the bottom, but this is kind of more of just an experiment. I just wanna see, like I said, how does the golf ball turn and you know how does this all kind of work? So um, that's what we're gonna do today. It'll be kind of fun, I think. Hopefully it'll be uh, pretty interesting for you guys to see. Um, I, down the road, I wanna do more projects with golf balls. Um, it was funny when, um, Easywood Tools had me make golf ball blanks for their uh, for the booth uh, at the AAW symposium. I was like, oh, I've been meaning to make one of these things for a long time. So anyway, it'll be kind of fun, I think, and it should be pretty cool. So let's see here. Looks like Paul, I don't know. There's the, I, I saw you guys kind of talking. There's, there's a little argument over who was first. So Paul or Kim uh, were first. And we got lots of people here today, nice. So let me switch to the Sony cam, the overhead. Here are the rest of the results. Super excited about these things. These ones did kind of float up a little bit. So we got a little bit of clear in the bottom there, but oh well, you know, what are you gonna do? Those look good. These look pretty cool. This uh, green, uh, the green stuff looks like this. Uh, what is this called? Confetti? <laughs> I can't think of what it's called. I don't know. Sprinkle. Glitter, glitter. Like, I was like, what is, what's, what's this called? Um, the, the green looks pretty cool. It does kind of remind me of grass with the tees. And then this crazy chunk of fun <laughs> turned out pretty cool, I think. So I'm gonna cut this up into pen blanks and uh, we'll get, you'll get kind of like a half yarn, half match stick. Um, pretty cool looking blank, I think. So anyway, those will all go into the mystery boxes. We'll have to kind of divvy those up. I'm kind of debating, because of the way these things turned out, it might actually make more sense and more people would get a stopper. Um, it, at least I would get eight. I could probably make one more and have everybody get one of these in the mystery boxes if we did stoppers. Um, so I'm not sure which way to go on those um, or I'll just keep them as handles. So either way, I'll decide and that'll be the mystery this month. <laughs> so. Anyway, what else is going on here? Uh, nice, lots of people. All right, so I say let's let's head over to the lathe and let's get started on this project. What do you guys think? All right, so first step, let's see if you can see this. I'm not sure what you can see. Can't see it. First step I'm gonna do is get my tool out of the way. Uh, I'm going to flatten the bottom of this using a Forstner bit just to make sure that everything's nice and square um, where it meets the actual hardware part. So like when we're all done. That's, all, that's kind of a good thing to get in the habit of doing is to square that up, um, you know, where you're drilling and everything um, beforehand. That way you don't have any kind of awkward gaps on your hardware when you, when you finish the kit. So let me get some, where are my, there we go, safety glasses. Let's do it. All right. And the shop is a mess. I'm working on 50 things at once. What are you guys up to in your shops? Anything cool this weekend? Oh, there I am. I'm talking, I'm talking. 
Uh, and I'm really disappointed. So the, the raffle ticket bowl is on my easy chuck. And so I had to pull out the stupid Nova one. I don't like it. It's a good chuck. I, I, don't, I don't mean to bash it. What I hate about this thing, there's two things. Compared to the, um, compared to the easy chuck, these jaws have to go on in a specific position on the chuck. I don't know. There's probably some debate whether that's really fully necessary, but they do have numbers and you're supposed to put the jaws in a specific place. Even though this is the easy, you know, easy remove, you don't have to like unscrew them. The easy chuck, you just slam the jaws in wherever they, wherever you want. And so that's one thing. That's not a huge deal necessarily, but what I really hate about this chuck is it's when you like to tighten the jaws, it's actually backwards that you spin the handle thing. And I'm just like, Every time I, I loosen things up when I should be tightening it and I'm like, ugh. So that's one of the things that I really like about the easy chuck. <laughs> it's kind of silly, I know, but I'll tell you what. All right, so let's get this thing spinning here. And all you got to do is just kind of, you know, just make a little flat. That's, that's all you really need to do. Just make sure it's squared up. And then we'll switch to our drill bit and our uh, tap. So like I said, I'm just gonna drill and tap threads into the blank itself. Um, I would probably, had I thought about it and had enough time, what I would have done was drilled out for an insert and painted around there so that you didn't see any of this stuff on this blank. I don't really mind seeing threads on the stuff on the hardware personally, but on this one, I actually really would have done that, I think. I would have probably painted it green. Okay. And this is a 5 16 bit that I'm using. It's kind of a stubby one, which is nice because it won't deflect, you know, like pretty much at all when you're drilling, sometimes bits can, you know, like really long ones can kind of deflect a little bit more. All right, and we got our tap set up. And this is just so that I can mount it onto the universal mandrel from stainless bottle stoppers. But if you have all Nova checks, it doesn't, it does matter because you're messing around with this stupid thing. <laughs> it's, they're all backwards. I'd rather have all easy checks. And it doesn't solve the jaw problem. They still have to go on in a certain place. So like I said, I, give me the easy check any day. I think it's much nicer personally if you already have a bunch of you know nova chucks it's not like i would recommend you go unless you're like me and are just fed up with the reverse threading thing um i wouldn't recommend necessarily going out and replacing it but if you're looking for a chuck i would just go straight to the easy chuck i think it's a much better option All right, so let me double check and make sure. Should be good, but I just want to make sure that everything fits. I do that before I <laughs> start turning. You want to make sure that the, the mandrel is going to fit in your threads and also your mandrel <laughs> is going to thread up on there. Before you start turning, I mean, obviously you'll find out real quick that it doesn't fit on the mandrel. But anyway. Let's see, so this one's a different bushing than the bottle stoppers, I believe. That one looks pretty good. Okay. Thread that thing on. All right, now we can get rid of this Nova Chuck and I can quit complaining about it.
Back in the dungeon you go. Need to get another easy chuck. You have a Nova chuck for every set of jaws, it doesn't matter. But they still need to go in a specific place on that chuck. They're numbered. So you still have to take the time to do all that messing around. I don't I don't really understand what where what what's going on with that. <laughs> Maybe I don't understand, but either way, I still like the <clears throat> easy chuck a whole lot better. All right, so now again, what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to end up having to cut into this, but what I want to do is kind of, you know, we'll probably cut, take some of this off. I also, um, this blank is probably a little bit soft as well because the jaw is really kind of dented the heck out of this. Um, amazing clear cast. I would probably wait even on a blank this size. I would probably wait a little bit, like give it a, I don't know, five days, maybe. Um, so we we cast this on Wednesday. And uh, we use the amazing clear cast, but tip like compared to Alumilite clear slow, this is another reason why I like that. That stuff hardens up. The cure schedule on urethane resins is it gets really close to, you know, like like the, the cure shoots up, like the curve. You know, like epoxy is like an even gradual cure time. So, you know, it's gonna be 50% cured. If the full cure time is seven days, in three and a half days, it's gonna be 50% cured. In seven, it's 100, and it's just a straight line. Whereas urethanes, they go to like 80% really quick, like within a day or two, and then it kind of tapers off a little bit. So it's kind of more of a different type of curve line, right? So epoxies, that's one of the things, is they're gonna take a little bit longer sometimes to get fully cured. Um, and in this case, it's a little bit soft, so we'll have to see how that works, but I think it'll be okay. It's not super soft, but. All right, so sorry, just checking the checking the chat a little bit. I'm going to be using the mini finisher. I mean, this is my go-to tool. You guys see me using this for pens for I mean, I was using this on the bowl. It works for for a lot of things. Um the only the only issue is if you need to get in and hollow something, this thing really only you're only really supposed to hang this off the the tool rest this far. So, you know, you need longer stuff. But for smaller projects, this thing, the, the mini finisher can handle so many different types of things. All right, so I'm gonna turn the air, the, the dust collector on now. Hopefully it won't be too loud. So we'll try and keep a decent amount of the golf ball intact, but I am gonna turn into it. I mean, I've already turned into it. Um, and then just kind of taper this down. Kind of have a big ball on the top and taper down the bottom. But at least the T should be mostly intact.
One nice thing is if it's, you know, I can tell that this is a little bit soft material. Um, it's, it's actually quite easy to turn when it's softer. The problem is it's harder to polish. All right, just in case, I don't know what the, the gription is. I'm gonna get the face mask on when I start turning into this golf ball. Just in case I, it's a four situation. Okay, let's see what this is looking like. It's kind of rubbery where the, the golf ball was. I think that's just the outside skin. I'm thinking the inside might be kind of harder. And uh, one thing to note, these are not like Titleist golf balls. They're a little bit different. These are mini golf balls. So I don't know if the outer skin is gonna be, is, would turn different on like a Titleist or a Callaway, whichever one you want. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, it's turning okay. It's just, I don't know. Pretty rubbery. Paul's in Innsbruck, nice. That's cool. I would like to go there in the winter. Sometime and do a little bit of snowboarding. You getting any uh, hiking? What are, you, what are you up to in Innsbruck? What, what else do you do in the summer there? Probably some good hiking and stuff.
stabilized golf ball. I'm pretty sure you can't stabilize golf balls. <laughs> it's just a mini golf ball. Dunked in resin. Yeah, definitely gonna have to put a finish on top of this because it's just not awesome material. But it, it seems like the epoxy's stuck to it pretty well. I mean, I don't see any, there's no areas where it's like obviously coming apart or something. You know? River cruise onto the, pa what's the passion? I don't know what the passion is. Passion play. Oh, still don't know what that is. That's pretty cool though. Did you, did you plan this after the euro and the dollar evened out? Or was this just a, a are you just taking advantage and had this planned before? Yes, I don't know if this is gonna, I saw Paul was talking about rubber bands, I don't know. Oh, oh I see, I see. I'm not sure that there's any kind of core in this thing, in this golf ball. Don't seem to be, the, the material doesn't seem to be changing a whole lot. Again though, th these are mini golf balls, so it might just be kind of like solid all the way through. All right, so that's kind of a cool, I kind of like this shape on the top here. Um, but like I said, that I don't exactly know 
Like we're really gonna have to cover that up with something, I think. Which, because this stuff, the, the resin is so soft anyway, we, we would have had to put a finish on to get it glossy. So that's not really like a big deal, but I just, I don't even know. Like realistically, the best thing to do would be to probably put epoxy on top. So I don't think I want to do that though. We might just load it up with a bunch of UV resin and turn into that possibly. Uh, I was planning to hear go. <laughs> You're just taking advantage. Nice. Got a good conversion rate. really take a big bite with the resin being on the softer side just really hog material away nice Australia is cool I got to go there many years ago Gretchen did a my wife did a, a semester abroad so we went to uh, Actually, we went to, um, where'd we go? Um, Cairns, so we could uh, do some, you know, go to the Great Barrier Reef. And then we also went to New, uh, New Zealand, we went to Auckland. It wasn't, uh, that just was a bad decision. It was a nice city, but I wish we would have done something else instead, or at least switched. We ended up in Auckland where I would have rather started in Auckland, done that, and then, because it was really cold and rainy, kind of like San Francisco weather, or I don't know. I don't know about that, but it was cold and rainy. And uh, and then, you know, like if we would have gone to the tropical paradise part, because Kansas is way, you know, much further north, um, I think things would have been nicer to end on that instead of Auckland. But either way, awesome people and good food and fun times. guys what do you think about this shape this is pretty cool for a whiskey stopper I think kind of reminds me of like a tap handle even let's get you guys in the front side let's see what's going on over here oh we're stuck on something I got cord issues give me some cord
Look at that. It's pretty sweet, huh? Still got a little ways to go on this. Kind of digging that, though. Uh, no, my dust collector's never gotten clogged. Well, this one's not rubber bands. I, these, again, Paul, these, this is a mini golf ball. I, I, I don't, it's not like you need a lot of rebound with those, so they may actually be just completely, you know, solid material. I can't imagine they put a lot of work into making mini golf balls. So I'm thinking the cores might be quite different. I don't know though, I, I really don't. You just never know these days what anything's made out of. We'll have to do a how it's made. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna lose the face mask because I don't really see this thing falling apart on me at this point. I think we're good. Oh. Lost my dust mask. To the to the bushing there, but I, I think I want to taper this down a little bit further. And actually, that's a kind of a neat look as well. Let's let's investigate this shape. Okay, pretty cool looking shape. You're late again. Nah. PVC. Ah, you Googled it. Nice.
Nice. Dave Sloan's here. What's up, man? Okay, so I think what we need to do now is cover up the, the core of this thing. Because there's like, can, what do you, can you guys see? Let me, let me get you guys kind of in a little bit and zoomed into this core kind of material and the outside. The problem is, it's like funky, you know? This is all kind of weird material that I don't really think is going to sand particularly well. So what I'd like to do is just cover it up completely. And I'm thinking we could just slop on a bunch of UV resin, cure it, and then maybe turn it. Well, you know, the, the only issue is I, I really, to do that correctly with the UV resin, you really want to cure it under like the sun or light. So that's going to take longer. I think what we'll do is we'll just glob on a bunch of uh, thick CA glue over that. Try that out and see how that goes. So the way that I'm going to do it, I'm just going to grab a glove, just kind of dump it on. The beauty of that is it'll cure right away for us so we don't have to mess around. And that'll work pretty well. I think e either way. In fact, CA glue might actually work technically a little bit better even. Um, these, these are full-size balls. It's just, it's for, for like putt-putt golf. They're not smaller than normal. They're just not for real golf. I don't know, I, I haven't, I've seen people turn into them. I, I guess I never noticed how far they went, but I've never actually seen rubber bands on the inside, I don't think, offhand, like some of the new ones anyway. They seem to have like weird cores, but you know, maybe there's something inside of this. It's like a multi-layer kind of thing. All right, so let's turn this down. I'm just gonna, you guys are probably way zoomed in. Am I right in the way? Yeah. So I'm just gonna, this still may be in the way, but that's what I gotta do. That worked pretty well. And then I'm just gonna spray, you know, do the accelerator. We'll probably do another coat, maybe two more actually, because we really wanna build up, you know, a layer over that stuff. Medium might work a little bit better. This thick is pretty, pretty thick. I don't know. Uh, one other thing that I actually want to do is I'm going to put this sham wow thing down. I don't really want CA glue all over my <laughs> lathe bed. Not exactly the most awesome thing. So do it again. Uh, that's a good Chris, uh, question, Chris. Is it Chris? Chiz? Um, I kind of had to. Um, the, the golf ball was 
this blank didn't start out big enough for me to just leave it. And to be honest, I actually really wanted to cut into this and just see how it went. Uh, but to, just to true the blank up, I cut into the golf ball. So Am I going to put some darker pink on it? No. I'm just going to leave it. I'm not, like I said, this is, I'm not particularly worried about this project. It's kind of more of a, just a, for fun. <laughs> I want to see how the, this golf ball turns. I'm not that worried about the details on this one. I don't know how you'd really effectively do that anyway, you know, really. And actually have it work right. It's not like you can really blend in those two. It would be almost impossible to, to like color match the skin, you know, or whatever the out, outer coating covering of the ball. So I, I, I think it would be a kind of a fruitless endeavor. Part of the fun is the fact that you turned into these things, you know. Alright, so hopefully that was enough coating. I may have to put some more on if I... And, and the only reason I'm doing this is just because those the, the surfaces were all weird. Um, you know, it's one thing if it was just kind of a, you know, slightly different from the resin. That may not really cause any issues, but the co covering, the cover of the ball was just some really nasty material that would not have sanded particularly well, I don't think. So if I just cover all of that stuff and then turn it back, we should be good. And I am going to put a, a top coat on the whole blank, probably, but I just want to get, like, a base coating over that cover in the ball part. like I'm cutting into it again already. We're going to have to put, probably do multiple coats. I'm going to switch. I'm going to try the Mercury Medium Flex. I think it might just go on a little bit easier. But I think we're going to have to put lots of coats of this stuff on to do what I want it to do, to really build up. I want to build it up to the point where I can like turn it back and leave, uh, <clears throat> you know, and still have CA glue between that and the ball. Kind of like a finish, but we're just like pre-finishing it. Yeah, you can technically put color in CA glue, but I don't, it would be extremely difficult to make it look any better, you know, I think.
I don't think it's going to really add a whole lot of good to it. I'm going to do one more coat, I think, and then... and turn this back a little bit. Okay. Let's see how we did now. stop and see so far it's been pretty good that's definitely there's a little bit of something there I think we might have got I might have to do one or two more coats after I get this thing all kind of cleaned up but so far I think we're doing pretty good oh uh, you know what one thing one thing to note guys I started cutting down here where we've already trued this up and I noticed it was kind of a little bit out of true. The other issue with epoxy not being fully cured and trying to turn it is it kind of bends <laughs> and warps um, at, at higher speeds. So just something to be aware of. Yeah, this stuff down here is out of whack again.
like we went through right there. All right, so at this point, I think what I'm gonna do, we'd have to coat this with so much stuff that I think we're just gonna move on and start sanding and then uh, put a finish on top. So I'm gonna start out with 180 grit, I think. I think that'll work. I actually don't really wanna go too low um, because the, the resin itself is kind of soft. I'm gonna reverse the lathe also so I can just sand on the top. You might notice also softer resins tend to clog your paper more. So you're gonna watch that. You know what? I'm gonna we're gonna go to 120 because this is taking forever. Just to get the tool marks out. I find myself pushing harder and harder, trying to speed the process up. That's not how to sand. Not how you want to do it. Let's see what this thing looks like. We're getting pretty close now. Might actually start uh, building up some more layers of um, finish soon. I think I'm gonna try and get this, uh, this end part kinda turned a little bit smoother before I start sanding it. I think I can do that. Let's let's put it on forward. What are you guys seeing? Okay.
Okay. Let's see what we can do with some sandpaper this time. Oh, I lost my sandpaper piece. There it is. All right. I think we got it sanded up to 120 at this point pretty well. There's a few little low spots, but I'm just going to cover that with uh, some more CA glue. Maybe just get him a little bit closer here, but... I think, I think it'll be easier to build more material on top than keep sanding at this thing. And I'm not gonna glob it on like I did before. Now it's just kinda, you know, kinda more normal coats, you know. I was really just loading on a thick blob of material uh, before. So I'm gonna wipe it off with some denatured alcohol. get any extra grit or dust off of that thing and we'll move up to 180 grit I'm probably not gonna go particularly high in grits because we're just definitely gonna be putting a, a finish on top you know so I'll probably just go to like I might even try just 220 and I'm kind of curious to see what that how that works just going to 220 and then putting a CA finish on top. So let's just do that. Like I said, this is kind of an experimental piece. I'm not particularly worried if this turns out amazing. I don't, I never really thought it was going to turn out to be a masterpiece in the first place. We'll just call it practice experiment, you know? Mark's here. What's up, man? Actually, Mark is the first person that I saw um, uh, who made a golf ball blank. Uh, I, I actually sat in on a uh, like a demo type thing, like a class demo at the Utah Wood Turning Symposium that Mark put on, and he was showing all kinds of cool stuff that he's made. Did you use polyester resin for that for the golf ball blanks that you made?
Oh, you used Illumilite too. Okay. I, I guess technically I used Amazing Clearcast on mine. Nice. Did you, uh, I forget, did you scuff the balls up at all? Before you cast them? You're horrified, why? It was fine. Thing is, I was like, I'm gonna sit in on this, you know, yeah, I've done a few things, but you know what, you, you showed all kinds of cool um, things that I had never even thought about doing. I mean, honestly, I don't think at that point I'd even seen a golf ball blank, necessarily, you know, maybe in passing somewhere. But I do, you know, I did mostly pen stuff, so you showed all kinds of cool projects that you made. I thought it was a good class. Any class where you can get some information or ideas is a good class. And I'm and everybody in there also was like, oh, you know, like it was kind of like right at the beginning of where people actually accepted the fact that you <laughs> you could use resin with wood turning. So there's a lot of people that were pretty interested, I thought. All right, so let's see here. We're going to go for um, I think we're going to continue using this the medium, maybe? I don't know. I never have very good results putting medium on, but... UV resin wouldn't be a bad way to go on something like this, but... Oh, I just dropped the glue. Not good. <laughs> Actually, we're going to keep sanding first. So... what? Do I what am I doing? I got distracted. All right, so next grit, 240. And then we'll try and see what happens if we, we don't go any higher. I have a feeling that four, like in the past, 400 or so, a lot of times is good enough on a lot of things. Like you, you don't really see scratches because the resin fills in those scratch marks, you know. The big question is, you know, did you get all the 180 grit or, or lower scratches out? I think that's more of the problem. But we'll, we'll, we'll see if 220 looks okay. I would say that, you know, somewhere between 600 and 1,000 is probably your best bet to make sure that there's really no scratches or anything that you're trapping underneath the, the resin or underneath the finish. But you don't you really don't need to go any higher than a thousand. If you're gonna put a top coat finish over. It's just extra work. Oh, nice, the Choya Cactus Blanks turned out good. I am glad to hear that. Yeah, those ones are fun. I, I, I like casting Choya. Really makes some, some really cool looking patterns and shapes. And Glad to hear that it turned out good. All right, so we got some 240 grit going on here. If you're just joining the fun, we cast a golf ball and a golf tee last Wednesday. And uh, we're, we're, I wanted to turn this up and just kind of see, we're making a whiskey bottle stopper out of this. But it's kind of just a, for fun project, I wanted to turn into, it, it's actually a mini golf ball, like for like mini golf, putt putt golf. 
So it's a little bit different than if you went down and bought a box of Titleists. Um, that, like the core, the inside, I think, is a little bit different. It's just kind of a solid one-piece kind of thing. Where I've seen other people turn golf ball blanks where there's quite a few like layers almost on the inside of a lot of these things. So it can be kind of cool. Um, I use the two inch PVC pipe, so this, this isn't the greatest golf ball project. Um, I would go for like a four inch PVC or something like that. Where you can actually see a lot more of the golf balls inside. But I thought it'd be kind of fun just to kind of see how these things turn out. And then there's a golf tee underneath it. And that's definitely visible. You kind of see that in the yellow. Uh, but the golf ball like skin was kind of nasty and so didn't really want to sand or even turn that well so I'm trying to kind of we're gonna put a finish over top of this whole thing all right so 220 grit you know you can definitely still see scratches and stuff in the blank but I'm kind of curious to see how this turns out so we're gonna put a finish on top of that typically I'd go up to at least like around four to six hundred but I'm just kind of curious to see how this turns out. All right, so one thing I'm gonna try actually, last time I used the Scott paper towels, it really kind of seemed to cure quick. I'm gonna try the blue shop towels to apply. Um, you could use a glove, That's that works well. I was doing that earlier. Um, probably easier to get it on like smoother, possibly, but. I just want to try it. We're doing all kinds of experiments today. Some days you just got to do that. All right, so here we go. We'll put a big blob on. A little bit more. See, this is this thing's a little bit on the large size, the long, you know, especially like long. To get CA finishes on well, it's a little bit harder. I, it's harder for me, for sure. Pens are, are pretty easy. They're so short that you can really kind of zip it on. And then when you have a lot of curves and things, that also makes things even more difficult, you know? You can see the golf ball a little bit down there. It's kind of cool. It's not too bad. All right, so let's keep going with this finish here. Yeah, I just, I really don't have enough time to get this on, I don't think. Might have to switch to UV resin. In fact, I think I'm gonna. I just, I'm having a difficult time getting this to lay down smooth. So let me just kind of sand this up a little bit with some 400. to get rid of any major ridges or weird things that I kind of put into it. Uh, while applying the CA finish there.
Another finish that can work pretty good for like medium size or larger things is craft coat. That seems to, it, it seems to be a decent one. It's like a, uh, I think it's like a polyurethane finish. But you really have to kind of like let it sit overnight before you can do anything with it. So that's why I really don't use that much. But it's a pretty good one. You can get it to lay down flat. It's almost similar to like a, a water-based polyurethane. Um, if you, you know, just do regular woodworking, it's kind of similar to that. Actually, I don't know. I might be able to, with just those two coats, I might be able to polish this because I don't think that I took it all off. Let's try it. I mean, I, just, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Worst case scenario, I got to put some more finish on, right? So I'm going to just touch this with some denatured alcohol real quick. And then we're going to, um, I'm going to go with the, I have like a 500 grit pad here. And I'm just going to kind of quickly smooth this out. This pad can kind of get into corners and not be as aggressive as um, the Abernet. I'm just going to smooth this up. But I'm thinking we might be able to actually get this stuff polished the way that I put it on. Let's just see. Again, I'm not going for a masterpiece here anyway. See what we can make. I'm gonna wipe that off, and then we'll start wet sanding, and then we'll uh, might even try some magic juice polish today on on a larger kind of piece. All right, so let me stop and read here. Yeah, well, see, I've found that it typically will backfill scratches, but sometimes you kind of also trap scratches underneath, and I don't know what, how, you know, how that works. But, you know, in the woodworking world, if you put a finish on, you're going to scuff between coats with, like, 320 grit, you know. So, I mean, 220, 320, something like that, 400. So, you know, I'm just kind of curious. I think two, 220 is a little bit low. Um, four to 600, I think that 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 seems to be the sweet spot um, much higher than that and you're kind of just wasting time i think um, you know i don't think it's necessary really um, 220 i think that might be kind of pushing it <laughs> but we'll see we'll see what what it looks like no oh, i need i need new water this water is disgusting so i'll be right back guys right back All right, we got some fresh water. We're ready to rock and roll now. Uh, I've never used the melamine finish, no. Um, I think that that's sanding sealer though, isn't it? I know there's a melamine sanding sealer. But yeah, it's like lacquer. Um, my problem with lacquers is they're high solvents. 
So you put a, you got to put a lot of coats of that stuff on. Um, and the VOCs are pretty high. Like a lot of that stuff you probably can't even get in California due to the, the high VOC count. Lacquers are nice. Uh, they, they're a hard finish. They're, they're you know, like it's, it's like a hard, um, like hard candy compared to like taffy. So they, they're, they're pretty easy to polish, but you got to put lots of coats on. Spray lacquers, you know, works good too. And I used to do that on a lot of the projects. I would just spray lacquer it when, when I... Once I got it to like 400, and, and in some cases, this is one of the reasons why I don't really like the paste stuff. Because in some cases, you just send, you're just sanding a project for like, I mean, days. You know, you sand it, and then there's still scratches, and then you sand it back, and there's you know, like nothing that you do seems to get all the scratches out, especially like on a black piece. It's just, it shows every flaw, and it's really, really hard to get every scratch out. And some days, you're just like, I'm done. I'm just putting a finish on this thing, you know compared to just trying to polish it out um, entirely. And so that's one of the things, like the, those pastes, you know, they have oils and, and waxes in them. And I mean, the minute you put that stuff on, you're done. You, you can't, you know, just say, oh, I'm just gonna spray finish it real quick. Kind of a nice uh, thing to have in your back pocket if you just get to the point where you're like, I'm done sanding and polishing, it just is not working. So there may be a couple little areas on this where I didn't really get a lot of finish on. And so we, we'll have to kind of see how this looks in the end. But it would be nice if there was just enough finish on there for me to get this polished and not have to put more on. All right, I think that's probably fairly good. I'm guessing we'll probably see a few little scratches here and there anyway but from the, the 220 grit possibly you know i'm putting a moderate effort into this let's say kind of curious how this turns out again you can always chuck this thing back up and and you know put another finish on or, or you know sand it out or whatever so that's kind of the nice thing about these like stopper type kits where not like pens are a little bit more difficult where you know if you by the time you assemble it if you got to repair it you got to take it apart with these all you got to do is unscrew it and move on you know not a big deal so let's uh yeah we got a couple we got some sand like sand through areas right there looks like but let's let's see what happens if we try and just polish this thing up i think i'm gonna try magic juice on this and just kind of see see what we get uh, we should actually get a pretty good idea after the first coat if this is going to be just absolutely terrible or i mean the first the first step i'm gonna need more than that There we go. The glass is on. Oh, we're going the wrong way. Okay, I'm gonna get you guys in the front here. You can see what this looks like. I'm thinking it's gonna be reasonable. It's just not gonna be perfect. That's kind of I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. 
That's what I'm thinking, though. I haven't actually really looked at this thing yet. Get the camera set and then take a peek. And so you can see some kind of lines right here. That's not particularly pretty. Um, a few, uh, I can kind of see a few kind of scratchy things, but not too bad. I mean, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And we got definitely a finish up here. But it's like right here. We got, I don't know what's going on there. I, I think I sanded through the finish right there. I think we're going to keep moving because this side looks fine. I think we're going to go up with the next uh, the next grit and see what, what happens when we get this thing fully polished. So that was just the first step of the magic juice. Let me get some bigger paper towels. Actually, another thing that uh, Michael said was that bounty paper towels Michael Harden are probably the worst ones to use with magic juice and that's what I'm using of course so we're gonna we're gonna switch it up we're gonna go with the the shop towels I think I believe he said that these ones are maybe not the best option but they're definitely not the worst let's go with step number two Okay, glasses on. Kind of flinging it a little bit all over the place. another thing that might end up happening is it's just not as clear um, using the 220 or you know only sanding up to 220 that may be kind of a side effect of that too you might get it a little bit more clear if you go higher I usually get pretty good results if I go to at least 400 I, I've on pens at least I've gotten pretty decent results. But, you know, again, you, it's one of those where you got to make sure you know that you've gotten all the previous grit scratches out. It's 400 grit for sure. And you haven't really been pressing hard. Like you did a good job sanding, you know. Uh, one of the reasons the bounty paper towels aren't as good with uh, that, that uh, I mentioned that and you may be going, what's the, <laughs> okay, they're both paper towels kind of, um, the blue paper towels are a little bit, or these shop towels are a little bit less abrasive. And so you can go up a little higher. He actually uses, I think he was saying he uses like a, uh, like a microfiber type thing, especially on the, like the super high, you know, when you get to like step five and six, um, you're probably, there, there's, there'll be a little, advantage to using something like that but you got to watch out because you don't want to be using a towel you know on a on a lathe that can get dangerous real quick so i don't know i think i'm good with paper towels with these you know these blue paper towels i think that's probably fine um, if i could find something small enough where even if it did kind of catch it's not really gonna get you know cause an injury maybe but I'll, I'll kind of look into that and see if I, if, I, if I find a good option for, you know, like a kind of a softer application thing, um, I'll, I'll let you guys know. 
Unfortunately, Michael couldn't do demos. They, he had all kinds of problems um, shipping his stuff. Um, he had a, a something got like lost or something. Um, a box of all of his like demo equipment, <laughs> like was gonna show up like the day after the turning expo was like over. He's like, that's great. So he couldn't do actually do like live demonstrations on applying magic juice. It's kind of a bummer because I wanted to see his, you know his whole process. Next time though. He'll probably be at the Ohio, Mid-Ohio Pen Turners Gathering. I think that's in September. If you wanted to see that, might be there. All right, where are we at here? Step five, we're coming up on five, guys. Um, an alternative way to deal with this thing is you can either just polish it up with uh, Zona paper or, you know, if you like micro mesh, um, one of those kind of polishing papers all the way up. Um, or you could go with the buffing, you know, route, buffing wheels. And in that case, I would probably, you know, sand up to about 1,200 to maybe at the most like 2,000. I don't think I'd go that high. Um, and then go with your triple E wheel on your buffing wheels. You'll be good to go. All right, so step six, here we go. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad, considering I put pretty much minimal effort into this whole thing. And it was never, you know, I never really had super high hopes that it was going to be amazing. That's not bad. So I'm just trying to look at this. I, I don't know. I mean, I think I can see some scratches. I, I wasn't, like I said, I put kind of minimal effort in. I think definitely you'd be better off going up to like at least 400. I think 220 might be a little, little low. Um, there is something weird going on right here and I just can't figure out what, 
if I sanded through the finish, it seems pretty glossy. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know what that is. There's some kind of weird mark there. The golf ball looks kind of crazy. It's kind of cool looking. All right, so let's get this thing off the lathe and zoom out a little bit. So again, this is going to be a whiskey stopper. It's slightly different, same idea, but just a tiny, tiny bit different size compared to a, oh, we need to get this, this end part. Now here's another problem where with, with a kind of slightly um, soft epoxy, um, once you take your tailstock support away, things can get a little hairy with epoxies. So I'm going to, yeah, I think, the, I think our threads, see, that's the problem. Um, you're, you're better off with epoxies putting an inserted thread in. At this point, I don't think I can even turn this part. Um, I think it's just going to wobble all over the place because my threads are stripped. But we're just going to leave it the way it is. Like I said, this was just kind of an experiment. Definitely go for the insert on epoxies. Um, it just it, it kind of tears it apart if it's soft. And even when it's fully cured, some epoxies can kind of, you know, with, with a little bit of heat and stuff, some epoxies can soften up anyway. And especially if it's spinning fast. Um, you kind of run into some issues. So let me let me just see if if I thread this back on. I don't think it's going to work too well. I just I just I can't tighten it. You know, that's the problem. I can try to. Well, so what I'm going to do, like I said, I I, I think it, it's kind of dangerous to even mess around with this. I'm trying to turn it. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to uh, put a disc sanding thing on the lathe. Ooh, headstock's hot. Um, put a little disc type thing on there. And where is that thing? Any of these will do. Okay. And then again, I just use some, uh, well, oh man, that's going to take forever to turn that down. Hmm. Or just, you know, sand that down. So let, we'll, we'll just put a little bit of effort into this, put some finish on top and move on. I'm going to put some one, uh, 120 grit, 180. Let's see here. I need to get a piece of 120. Really quickly. So all I'm doing, I, I, I buy Abernet in these rolls. So I just cut off a little piece here. I could probably leave the corners, but I'm going to cut them off just so they don't scratch me. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. Again, if you're going to do this, grab, you know, th this pair of scissors is going to be toast. If you're cutting sandpaper, it still cuts sandpaper fine at the back part of it, <laughs> but it doesn't cut paper for sure. Okay, so we got our 120. And at this point now we can just turn this thing on and just kind of sand. I'm gonna turn my thing on. Grab our dust. Eh, that'll go fairly quick, I guess.
Well, that's going. That's actually going pretty quick. I got the, the little uh, dimple out, so I think I'm actually going to move up to the next, I'm going to go to 180. I'm going to try to get away without having to refinish the entire top part of this because I already put finish and, and polish around there. So I'm just going to try and kind of touch this up. Oh, we got to go faster than that. I'm going to spray this thing off. I know I'm not wiping it off either. I told you guys, minimal effort here. I'm doing minimal effort today. And it'll still turn out pretty good. I mean, that's that's actually another thing that I think will be kind of cool to, to see. There's a bunch of mistakes and things that aren't ideal on this piece, but you know, a lot of people get kind of hung up on perfection sometimes. It doesn't really need to be perfect a lot of times. Call that good. Okay, so now I'm going to wipe it off with a little denatured alcohol before we put a little bit of finish on. And I'm just going to touch it, like dab on a little bit of CA glue onto the top of this thing. And that's it. Just to kind of, you know, polish it up, make it glossy. So 
So I'm going to grab a blue paper towel. And I'm going to grab some of the Mercury Thin Flex. We're just going to kind of dab this on real quick. We're not even going to, we're not even going to like polish it. We're just going to apply this, maybe one or two coats. And it ain't going to be like super awesome, but it'll be good enough. Okay. Okay, so this pretty much sucks, but whatever. I don't really have any good way of, I guess we could maybe try and like sand, like turning on a piece of epoxy that's flopping around, that's not gonna really work, but turn, we can maybe sand a little bit of this. Probably can't really polish it too much, but. Let's see if we can't get a little bit of sanding done on this. And then buffing wheels would be a better way to go. Once we can get this thing up to a certain grit level, then you can just take it over to the buffer. And, uh, so it is kind of good to have, you know, different types of things depending on what your project is. Just gonna try to do again. We're doing minimal here, but it was pretty horrible. It was all cloudy and yucky looking. We're gonna do 400. I'm not gonna, well, yeah. Let's do wet sanding. I'm just gonna stick with my normal, normal thing here. I'm gonna wet sand the 750 and then 1150. I'm also not sanding a whole lot because I didn't really put a whole lot of CA glue on there. All right, I'm gonna call that good. Yeah, buffing wheels. Um, they make buffing pads too, though. That's another way you can go. Um, you know, with like similarly, it's a similar way to go with buffing pads on on like a hook and loop. Um, I, it's kind of nice though. You know, it, like really, you can do a lot of stuff with. You know, and you don't have to buy necessarily expensive. You know, wheels or any of that stuff doesn't have to be like super expensive you can get just you know a buffing wheel for tripoli get one for white diamond and then maybe get one that's like a super high like soft wheel 
for um, for like a polish even. Another thing you can do is Dremels have a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go get a face mask. I don't like breathing, buffing dust. It's a it's an abrasive, so you know. I don't think it's much better for you than sanding dust. All right, I don't think this light batteries. Yeah, I don't think so. Turn this down. So the first wheel that I'm going to use is Tripoli, T-R-I-P-O-L-Y. And again, since I'm putting kind of minimal effort into this whole thing, we're going to get minimal output. <laughs> kind of. But it should look okay. It'll be a lot better than it was originally. So let's move over to White Diamond. And that's just the Rouge name. White Diamond is white, of course. Triple E is kind of a brownish red. that's not too bad um, another thing that I have is a, I actually have a like I said a different wheel that sometimes I, I'll hook up on the lathe and uh, use a, a plat like a polish with it so I'll show you that too um, you know if you're doing like bigger projects and stuff I don't you know buffing wheels are really kind of the way to go so, but I got this. This wheel is super soft. It's it's actually called a string buff. It's a little bit different than your typical buffing wheel. So that's what I use with polishes, like this. So like a super high grit level or whatever. Uh, what do I? What's going on here? I'm missing a cap to one of my magic juices. That's not good. There we go. Got that. Let's get this water out of the way. And so, you know, if you already have buffing wheels and you want to get a little bit higher gloss on things, then you can just grab, you know, one more wheel and use um, like a, like a, you know, plastic polish or, or some sort of a car polish. I like this, this 105 um, Meguiar's. Um, a lot of people really like the Plastex from Meguiar's as well. Um, so there's, there's lots of different ways that you can go. Um, what I do is I'm going to shake this up, and then I actually apply it directly to the blank. And it can just give you a little bit more pop, you know, a little bit more gloss on that, on your blank. So I'll actually apply it there. Too bad. And then just wipe it off with something. Actually, I don't want to use that paper towel. I think it had something on it. Let's see here. I got a microfiber. Not a bad idea to invest into, into uh, some sort of a microfiber to wipe things off. You know, it won't, it, they, they just, they don't scratch. Um, and even, you know, you can pull dirt off, but they kind of don't wipe it around because it kind of traps the dirt in the fibers. So you can wipe things off. Not a bad idea, and they're super cheap. But I don't think I would want to use this with the lathe running, you know. That, that's, that's a recipe for 
pulling your, your arm off if it gets wrapped up. There's other types of microfiber materials and cloths. Um, one that actually is not a bad way to go, and actually I mentioned these in one of the 3D printing videos. Um, these things would work fine because they, they, they tear pretty easily. You know, I mean, so even if it got wrapped up on the lathe, I don't know that it's super dangerous in the end. Um, what do they call these things? Scrubby, reusable wipes. Um, but they, they're, they should be pretty good. They're, they're not very um, abrasive. You know, I think they're less, probably less abrasive than... Um, what, what was I using? Then the blue paper, uh, blue shop towels, you know? All right, so let's, let's get this thing assembled here and so you guys can see what's going on with this awesome thing. All right, so here's our, our whiskey stopper hardware. So that's not too bad, it's not awesome. Like I said, I put I pretty much put minimal effort into most of the finishing stuff. You can see the threads, that's not super awesome, but here's the top. I mean, that, you know, for that was literally the, about as little effort as I could put into anything. And it isn't that bad. I mean, it's, you know, it turned out okay. It's clearish. But from like a foot or two away, like you can't even tell, you know, you can barely see there's a little bit of a flaw there down on this side but I mean this all looks pretty darn good really magic juice does a pretty good job oh, it's pretty cool you can see the tea in there I like the glitter um, one thing that's kind of weird is we we ended up with glitter on the top part of the blank but like sort of floated somehow around the ball I don't really know how that happened I, maybe because I was like manipulating trying to move the ball it kind of pushed stuff around I don't know who knows guys who knows that's a pretty cool, I can see that on a whiskey bottle. What do you guys think about that? On a whiskey bottle? I've definitely had clearer blanks. So, and I, again, I think that might have to do with, you know, only going up to 220 is you don't really, it's just not as clear through, throughout the, the entire blank. Um, another thing that'll cause that is just not sanding particularly well, which I didn't, you know, really do uh, an amazing job sanding this. Um, but it'll it'll diminish the clarity that you get in the end, even if you put a finish on top. I think I don't know that it can fix it if the scratches are are low enough um, grit. So who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I know, 10 foot, well, we always, we always laughed, it's a, it's a ten, there used to be a saying called a 10 foot paint job, where it looked fine from 10 feet away, it's, it's like, it's like a one foot, you know, that looks fine, I mean, the thing is, like, again, until you, like, really hold this thing up into your face, if this was sitting on your, on a, you know, whiskey bottle somewhere, from across the room, nobody's gonna even know, and you're like, oh, that's a golf ball and a golf tee. You know, so a lot of times you can kind of get away. It just depends. It, it depends on what, what the deal is. But a lot of times you can kind of get away with not. It doesn't have to be, you know, this this is a pretty, this is pretty shoddy work, I would say. You know, I mean, I was like, whatever. I don't really care if this turns out perfect or not. Um, but, you know, with a little bit more effort than what I put into this, um, you know, it would be fine. You know, you don't have to worry, you know, fret over every minor little detail on a project nobody's even going to notice it for most you know for the most part let's see here yeah so like i said whiskey it's a whiskey bottle um and there is a difference um uh, between the whiskey specific ones that stain you know stain and i got this from stainless bottle stoppers um Let's go to the overhead camera, but I'll show you the difference. I mean, there, there's, there's, yeah, this way. You know, I mean, not much, but there, there is a difference between just a normal bottle stopper size and a whiskey stopper. Um, just because you have a little bit larger bottle, but, but the whiskey stoppers are kind of nice because it's, it's a little bit bigger, you know, piece of hardware, and you can really do, you know, something a lot bigger for a liquor bottle 
than like a wine bottle. This would be a little bit kind of ridiculous possibly on a wine bottle. It just, it, it seems like it would work better on something like whiskey, you know, like a liquor bottle. I'm sure it could be used for lots of things. You're free to experiment. Sent me an email, nice. Yeah, I still have the old uh, email address. That was one mistake I made. I was like, oh, I'll just, because I wanted to switch. I was using the like Google um, thing to like, you know, route mail. And uh, and I really hated having to deal with that. And then I didn't realize that I could, I really can't get rid of that <laughs> necessarily. Um, so I was like, oh, whoops. Maybe I could somehow, but. Anyway, guys, so that was a pretty fun project. Um, and, you know, for the mystery box folks, I'll get these guys cut up, um, the, the pen blanks. And then, again, I'll have to kind of decide which way I want to go with these. We don't have enough tees to make 10, you know, like not everybody was going to get a handle size, but I could make one more blank and get everybody some tees in a stopper size, which I'm kind of, in my mind, I'm kind of leaning towards doing that now. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see. It'll be a mystery. You guys will have to wait and see. Um, I'm pretty excited, though. So, I've, you know, at the beginning of the show, I was saying that I've, I'm working on the raffle ticket bowl. That's actually getting very close to, to, to being kind of pretty much finished up now. Uh, and I'm pretty much wrapped up on the mystery box from Turner's Warehouse, that project. And that one I think you guys are really going to enjoy. Um, I had a blast making that thing. And I think the video is going to be like a, a – it's going to be different. I think it's something where – you know, you guys can kind of see the progress of, of this project where I didn't really know what was going on from the beginning. It wasn't like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna set out to make a, you know, whiskey stopper. And, uh, you know, here's how the project goes. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing, period. Um, and so you have to kind of follow along with, you know, what, what do I do with all this stuff? So it's pretty, uh, I think it'll be pretty cool. I don't know. Oh yeah, olive oil, that'd be cool. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, so those videos will be coming out um, as soon as I can get everything edited. I have actually been editing along the way with the mystery box. That'll be the first video that comes and It's just going to be a regular video, um, both of these. Um, so that'll be the first one that, that pops up. Um, I'm ho I, honestly, I'm really hoping I can get that thing done and posted next week sometimes. It, sometime. it may not be on Sunday this, this you know, week, but it, we'll see when I can actually get everything done. And then the raffle ticket bowl should be like the next week after that, possibly. So lots of fun stuff going on in the shop <laughs> right now. So I don't see any questions or anything like that. So I think we'll wrap things up, guys. So, uh, oh, uh, next week I'm debating um, because I need to get editing done on these videos and all that kind of stuff. I may take next week off from live streams. OK, so just a, a, like a heads up. Um, we'll see about Wednesday and Saturday next week. Um, just I, I i really i i got a lot of orders and i'm trying to fill you know inventory again so i just just tentatively um be watching for that and I'll, I'll try to let you guys know on youtube and on um like instagram and facebook all right so just a little you know heads up on that one but anyway i hope you guys have a great evening thank you all for joining the fun today and i will see you guys all on the next live stream